the weird world of Doris Wishman, the first lady of exploitation. Doris Wishman helped invent the Ruffy, an exploitation subgenre that specialized in sexualized violence. Her work is often nastier and rougher than many of her practically all male contemporaries. Doris Wishman monetized exploitation, but filmmaking was more than just financial success. It was a reactionary art form. She lived as a seemingly ordinary 1950s housewife until the death of her husband led to a complete nervous breakdown. Her denial of his death was so severe she began having hypothetical conversations with him. Filmmaking provided an outlet for her despair, and I think there's a pathos to many of her storylines that reflect this tragic loss. Wishman's work was made for titillation, but there's always a big beating heart of darkness underneath. She made romantic roughies, so there's a strange sensuality juxtaposed to her sexual violence. Her works are considered the strangest, the weirdest, head-scratchers of the exploitation genre. I first heard of Doris Wishman in the John Waters film Serial Mom, which features some of Chesty Morgan's very best scenes from Doris Wishman's Double Agent 73. There will never, ever, ever be another superstar like Jessie Morgan. Her bust line was literally bigger than her head at 73 inches. Her bosoms were so vast and so surreal, the great surrealist filmmaker Federico Fellini even cast her in his movie Casanova. Like Wishman, she was a self-made woman because of the tragic loss of her husband. Jessie Morgan reticently became a stripper to support her children. Her infamous bust line and intricate costumes eventually made her a superstar of the 70s, touring the world and earning two to three thousand dollars a night. It eventually led her to a film career, and the one she made with Doris Wishman cemented her cult celebrity forever. And as of 2020, Chessie Morgan is alive and well. And Chessie, if you're watching, I love you. I almost wonder if Chessie Morgan's breasts had a mind of their own, because in Deadly Weapons, her boobs actually have a flashback scene, which is probably a cinematic first and last. For extra credit, please see the other Doris Wishman Chesty Morgan collaboration known as Deadly Weapons, which the title is totally self explanatory. And Chesty is under the fabulous Nomi de Plumy Zsa Zsa. Ooh. I'm also really partial to her earlier black and white efforts, which I call her sexploitation new wave phase. Why are you leaving? You know that I love you. I know. I love you too. That's why I must go. Bad Girls Go to Hell and Another Day Another Man were both shot in 1965. They have many of the same cast, locations, costumes, and it gives the term companion film a whole new meaning. I love Another Day Another Man. And it has a woman with an alarming beehive hairdo who becomes a call girl when her husband is bed bound by a mystery illness that is never explained. I'm always shocked at how through the whole picture no one ever says nice hair, no one compliments her gigantic beehive that just takes your breath away in every shot. One of my favorite scenes is when the two roommates decide to get ready for bed and they change their clothes in the living room and it has to be one of the longest changing scenes in cinema history. My other favorite scene is where the newbie call girl meets a masked John who says he's a public figure and doesn't want his identity to be revealed and he just says all these really bizarre philosophical nonsense that I really am a fan of. You're so strange. Man is always strange. Don't you know that man never really knows who he is? He's always a stranger to himself. Born a man, let me die a woman. Wishman's masterpiece. Part sexploitation film, part documentary, it's really in its own lane and has even been described as beyond critique. It must have had people fainting in the aisles of those 42nd Street grindhouses as it showcases in gory detail the actual male-to-female surgery. But beyond its shocking content, it has to be one of the most empathetic films about trans men and women of its time and maybe even today. The doctor who narrates it really tries to describe trans people as intelligent, sensitive human beings who don't want their lifestyle trivialized. Beyond its graphic content, the most shocking part has to be the trans woman who's interviewed who reveals her admiration for Anita Bryant who had a very big anti-gay agenda in the 70s so that really kind of shocked me and made me laugh. I never thought of myself in that light so how can I be something I never believed in it in the first place and up to this point I, I'm still to some degree 
because I like Anita Bryant. And uh, she's against a lot of that. She really concocted the most unusual plots, like The Amazing Transplant is the first penis transplant movie where the transplant makes the recipient rape women with gold earrings. Love Toy is just beyond belief and it's beyond perversion. She was his pussy. Love Toy. Doris Wishman's films are impossible to defend, so she automatically becomes one of the greatest directors of all time. From 1960 until her death in 2002, Doris Wishman made 31 relatively successful sexploitation movies, and she later stated that when she died, she'll be making movies in hell. So apparently bad girls do go to hell after all. I hope to join her one day and review all her cinematic atrocities, but for now on this lifetime, you can buy most of her work through Something Weird Video, which is an incredible company who really stands for all of my cinematic values. Sometimes she's called the female Ed Wood. I disagree. I think she had a lot more class and style. I would never say she made art films, but she was a great artist, and she's certainly a cult icon and a proto-feminist filmmaker. My name's Jacob Lomax, and you've been watching Strangest Films. <laughs>